What is going on everyone, Jason here, and today we're doing a pretty epic comparison between two of the biggest and most feature-packed phones of 2020. The absolutely stunning Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and the super luxurious iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now Samsung and Apple have been battling it out since virtually the inception of smartphones, and what better way to see which one has the edge going into 2021 than comparing each company's top-end flagship device. So today I'm going to go through the core elements of both the Note 20 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro Max, highlighting strengths and weaknesses for each, and at the end I'll go over which phone I think is personally better to ultimately determine which phone holds the crown as the ultimate flagship king of 2020. Now before we jump into this review, if you're new here, I'm basically the guy who tests out the newest and most popular tech out there before you buy them to make sure that you're informed and don't make any purchasing mistakes. That said, would really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, it really helps me out. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with all the coolest tech devices and toys, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything. And real quick before I get into all this, which phone do you guys think is better? The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra or the iPhone 12 Pro Max? It might get a bit dicey down there, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Okay, first let's talk about design and form factor. And let's start with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So true to the Max moniker, not only is this a big phone, it holds the record as being the largest iPhone Apple has ever made. And even though it could be a bit jarring if you're not used to plus size iPhones, you likely recognize it as one of the most premium feeling devices you've ever held in your hand. Apple uses surgical grade stainless steel on the 12 Pro's frame, and I know this is likely going to make me sound a little bougie, but man, it's so nice. It's warmer and more welcoming in the hand than aluminum, and it also provides more grip, which is pretty useful when you're handling a phone this size. And with Apple flattening out the edges this year, it gives the phone a much more refined aesthetic, despite its inherent large size. And I think my favorite design element on this phone is the beautiful frosted glass panel that Apple debuted for the first time last year. First, it's great because it doesn't pick up fingerprints like other glass phones, and the matte finish helps provide a little bit of stealthiness that pairs perfectly with the super glossy high-end frame. And I'm telling you, when this phone catches the light, it shimmers like a luxury vehicle that's fresh off the assembly line. That said, the iPhone 12 Pro Max isn't the most comfortable phone to use. Its dimensions and weight makes it quite cumbersome to operate, and ironically, the flattened frame which makes the other smaller iPhone 12 models more comfortable to hold, actually to me has the opposite effect with this phone. It's so big that the sharp edges make me more anxious about dropping this, and I feel as though last year's 11 Pro Max with its rounded edges is more confidence inspiring in the hand, albeit not as nice looking. Now the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra shares a lot of the similar pros and cons when it comes to design, but to be fair, I feel as though Samsung approaches their phone better as they really are the pioneer of the large smartphone landscape. The Note has always been unapologetically in your face, something that the Note 20 still embodies, but in a much more refined manner. For example, the satin finish they were able to pull off with this gorgeous mystic bronze color is just as well executed as Apple's frosted glass design, and this is by far my favorite finish Samsung has gone with on any of their wide range of phones. Now yes, the frame is made out of aluminum and not something like stainless steel, but it still feels very premium, and I've always loved this boxy, more aggressive look with those sharp corners and flat top and bottom. The curved display is not my favorite from a usability standpoint, but there's no question that the sum of all of its parts makes the Note 20 Ultra one of the most elegant phones ever made. And despite it being actually slightly bigger from a dimension standpoint, I feel as though the Note is more comfortable in the hand. The lighter weight and the rounded sides makes for a more natural fit in the palm, and it's not as clumsy as the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And that last point is really magnified when seeing how each phone handles their unusually large sizes. Now we should start by saying that both phones have really huge and really high quality displays. Both are OLED panels that can get really bright, give off fantastic colors, amazing contrast, and a very enjoyable HDR content consuming experience. It should also be noted that the iPhone 12 Pro is actually using a display made by Samsung, to me an indication that even Apple knows who makes the best displays in the market. And even though they're both immersive with really good screen to body ratios, there's no getting around the fact that the Note Ultra did better here. You get virtually no bezel whatsoever, just a small cutout for the front facing camera, and the infinity look that you get with the curved glass. I mean, Samsung did everything they could to give their users as much screen real estate as physically possible. Now the iPhone 12 Pro Max, despite it having a more functional flat design with a very nice symmetrical bezel, the display still has a large notch at the top, something that most modern phones have gotten rid of. But what you get in return is Apple's Face ID system, which I definitely prefer over Samsung's embedded fingerprint sensor, but what biometric security measure you like really comes down to preference, and no doubt the Note 20 Ultra's design is way cleaner. The display in the Note continues to leap ahead of the iPhones when we factor in refresh rate. It has a 120Hz variable refresh rate for that buttery smooth user experience, and it's super nice to have on a display this large. The iPhone 12 Pro Max's display is fine, and navigating around the phone will be smooth mainly because of how well iOS is optimized, but it is at your standard 60Hz refresh rate. 
And at the end of the day, it has to be recognized that Samsung to me is being more intentional about the plus size nature of its flagship phone, and they want the Note 20 Ultra to be leveraged in a way that complements its design. And that sentiment is best illustrated with the addition of the S Pen. Now I'll say that it takes some getting used to, and you really do have to train your brain to use it, but once you do, it becomes an extremely useful resource, and it works really well. Plus, you get legit split-screen multitasking on the Note 20 Ultra, and other software features that take advantage of this large space that really caters to serious power users. The iPhone 12 Pro Max, on the other hand, to put it simply, is just a blown-up iOS experience. You get virtually no specific features that take advantage of this bigger size, and again, it feels a bit clunky. You can't help but feel like there's so much more Apple could have done with the screen real estate, much like they were able to do when they launched iPad OS, but for now, everything is just bigger, and that's about it. Now when it comes to performance, both phones are equipped with top-end processors, the Note 20 Ultra has the powerful Snapdragon 865 Plus, while the iPhone 12 Pro Max has the blazing fast A14 Bionic chip. And as to be expected, both phones are pretty beastly when it comes to day-to-day -day use. Opening apps and navigating around the UI is a breeze, spec-intensive gaming on both phones is not only a cinch, but also really fun with these super large displays, and both can manage some pretty complex camera features without breaking a sweat. Battery life is also really good for both phones, as they're packing some pretty big batteries. The Note 20 Ultra gets some kudos for being able to get the same battery life as the 12 Pro Max, even though it does have a higher refresh rate display. And when it comes to camera quality, it's again pretty close. The selfies coming out of both look great, some of the best selfies you'll see coming out of any phone right now. I found the color consistency to be better on the iPhone. The Note was jumping around from being cool to warm based on the lighting, and though I do like the moody look it's able to give off at times, it's not as consistent as I'd like it to be. When it comes to front-facing video, both can shoot in 4K, and even though Apple's been the reigning champ of this arena, I have to admit the footage coming out of the Note 20 Ultra is not bad. Both do a good job with dynamic range, and the stabilization is on point. Now when it comes to cameras on the rear, both are packing some pretty impressive hardware. The Note has its crazy 108 megapixel main sensor that could shoot 8K video, while the Torpo Max has Apple's newest larger sensor that could shoot 4K video and 10-bit Dolby Vision HDR. Specs aside, both phones produce outstanding stills, they're sharp, great dynamic range, and both do some pretty spectacular image processing magic with their high-end processors. I did notice that the images coming out of the iPhones are a bit sharper and keep in more details in the shadows. This makes for slightly more realistic dynamic range and better macro shots, but both perform very well and the quality here is neck to neck. One thing I still seem to be having an issue with on the Note 20 Ultra though, is this super slow shutter, which does make it difficult to get a sharp image when shooting in low light conditions. When it comes to video, I've said this before, but I feel as though that the Note 20 Ultra is the only phone that's getting close to what the iPhone can produce when it comes to smartphone video, and this 8K footage is pretty damn good. You do have to crop in a ton, and it shines the brightest when you're taking a close-up of something with a lot of detail, and despite it taking up all your internal storage, it's pretty impressive. The 4K footage is impressive as well, and I was pleased at how well it manages the dynamic range here. But as improved as it is, the video coming out of the iPhone 12 Pro Max is still best in class. The colors are more vibrant, the dynamic range is crazy good, and the footage is near cinematic when you're shooting in good lighting conditions. It's really impressive, and considering that video capability is becoming more and more important these days, it's definitely something to keep in mind when deciding between both. And that brings me to where I ultimately land with these phones. Though I do think both are pretty fantastic, I have to say that in my opinion, I do believe that the Note 20 Ultra is the overall better device. Samsung just has more experience working with larger form factor devices, and even though it's not perfect, the Note 20 Ultra is a more well-rounded device when it comes to design, usability, and performance. Now I do think that there's a lot of potential for future Max versions of the iPhone though, something I hope Apple is taking seriously. Okay, that's about it for this comparison review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys found it useful. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Check out these other dedicated reviews of both the Note 20 Ultra and the 12 Pro Max if you're looking for more. Let me know what your thoughts are below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.